Ooh. Hi, I'm Paul, and this is The Golf Show. Hi everyone, I'm Paul Hemlin. Welcome to The Golf Show. On the show this week, we're going to check out how the self-proclaimed scientist of golf, Bryson DeChambeau, tests his golf balls. Is this something we need to be doing in our game as well? In our regular rules feature, we're going to look at what happens if you've got too many clubs in the bag. In our subscriber showcase feature, where you get to be the star of the show, I've got two really funny videos to show you today. And we've still got Rory McIlroy's Shine Nike shirt to give away. We're getting pretty close on 1,000 subscribers now. Once we get to 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to ship this shirt anywhere in the world. To enter this competition, all you've got to do is hit that subscribe button. Okay guys, that's more than enough from me. Let's get on with the golf show. Okay, so I want to test the golf balls like Bryson DeChambeau. I was intrigued when I heard that Bryson throws out one to two balls every dozen. So what's wrong with these balls that are costing five pound a time? Well, let's take a look. So we put a golf ball in water, and don't worry, I'm not gonna get too scientific. I failed physics at GCSE, so bear with me. I've had to do a lot of research for this one. It's gonna sink, okay? So we need to test this. We're going to put some Epsom salts into the water. Epsom salts, that takes me back to Sunday League football. Goodness me. Okay, now hopefully this ball's going to float. If not, this will be the shortest episode of the Golf Show you've ever seen. Okay, so half a bag of Epsom salts later, I think we're ready to go. So we're going to put a Titleist Pro V1 into this and see what happens. Now, you know I normally play AVX, I might have lost a couple on Saturday, so I'm using the old Pro V1, still four pound a golf ball, premium golf ball, loads of tour players use these. So I'm going to drop this into the Epsom salts and it should float just under the surface. If the centre of gravity was in the middle of the ball, it would just spin round and round and round. So what I'm looking for here is where the light side is. Obviously the heavy side will pull through to the bottom. So it's still moving around in the bowl. So we can see that the lightest part of the ball is just where that Pro V1X line is. Let's pop it under again and see if it does that again. Give it a bit of a spin round. Okay, so now it's saying the lightest part of the ball is just on top next to the T on the Titleist logo. Okay, so it's a promising start for the Titleist, so we'll try it one more time, we'll put the ball in. So we're checking to see if the ball's balanced here. Okay, so I'm going to put a mark where the top of the ball was, as you can see there. So that means the heaviest part is the bottom of the ball. Well, it is if that pot comes back up on there. Let's have a look at that. But what's interesting about the Titleist is if we put it back in with that dot at the top, it's not coming back to that dot. So that would suggest that's a balanced golf ball because the weight isn't all at the bottom, it's more in the middle. So we'll put it back on the bottom again. Will it flip back over? It's in a different spot, it's near there, but it's not the same. One more time, give it a rotate. And again, it's not on the dot. So you might be asking, why is that important? Well, let's try some other balls and I'll explain why. Next up, no expense spared, I've got a Champ Titanium. I have no idea where this ball came from. Let's put that in. Gosh, you can hear that noise already. Okay. Just to the left of where it says titanium. Let's say about there. So we could see there that this ball wasn't balanced, it's heavier at this end than the other. So why is that important? Well, if you put a line on your ball, maybe you go over the, 
the manufacturer's name. Can't see why you'd want to cross champ out. But if you did that, and put your line on your ball there and lined up your putts, the heavy spot is on this side. So Bryson says that he's seen putts from 20 feet go offline 20 inches because the weight on one side of the ball will drag the ball that way. Even I can get that, I fail physics. What will that happen to a 200 yard drive then if the ball's not centered? So <clears throat> obviously a very cheap ball, not so good. Let's try some of the decent balls out on the market and see where they're at. We've got the Callaway Chrome Soft, let's try one of those. Okay, you can see the top of the ball there. Callaway is coming in on the Callaway C on the logo. So what Bryson is saying is golf balls are mass produced, they're not perfect. So let's put that one in, see if we get the dot in the same place. No, obviously Callaway, good make of golf ball, one of the market leaders. Two or three spins there. You can see the dot, but it's not on the dot. So that would suggest that the Callaway is a balanced golf ball. Next up is the Titleist Tour Soft. This used to belong to somebody called Steve H. I do play golf with somebody called Steve H. I might give him this. Mind you, he never gives me any of my balls back when he finds them. So Titleist Tour Soft, good quality ball. Okay. Put that one back in, give it a spin. Obviously these aren't as expensive as the Pro V1. Hmm, so that's quite near the dot. We'll try that one one more time. Thank you Steve H for donating this ball. Okay. That's not so good, is it? Two goes with the Titleist, and the cheaper Titleist ball is floating nearer the top. Now, it could just be a one-off from that dozen of balls, but that one isn't so good. The new Strixon balls that we tested out the other week. I really like the feel of these. Be interested to see what these come out like. Okay, black dot on top. Let's give that a spin. Where she stops, nobody knows. Okay, Strixon coming back onto the dot as well. Okay, I want to try one more thing. So this was the Titleist that we put in first. When we drop this one in, it tends not to come back up onto the dot. So that would suggest that's a balanced ball. Not far off, but not on it. But I've got two more Titleists here. Let's put them all in and see if they come back up onto the dots or not. So Bryson's throwing out about two balls a dozen. Obviously gets lots of balls free. What have we got here from Titleist? Okay, so we can see this one here is coming back onto the dot. So that is not a balanced ball, but these two here aren't. Okay, so we've got one out of three balls there that's imperfect. Wow, that's quite a lot, isn't it? Let's do that again. There we go, it's the one next to the logo. God, I love a bit of Golf Show logo. Yep. So even at the top end of the market, the Titleist Pro V1X, we've got two balls there that are pretty well balanced and one that's coming back to the same point all the time. Now, that doesn't mean it's a bad ball, but what it does mean is I need to know where the low point of that ball is for my putts. When I would mark my golf balls, if I put a line on it, I'd normally put it down that line, but that is not going to be in line with, with where that dot is. It's not perfect. So you've got to be careful because if you're hitting that putt and that weight's going to be on the side, that's going to carry that away. So we put all the balls in there. You've got your Champ Titanium right on top, as is the Shrixon Ignite. The AD333, Callaway's popping up to the top there as well a little bit. Let's give that another spin. 
and one of the Pro V1s. If the ball was perfectly balanced, this wouldn't happen and they would be on different places each time, a bit like you've got there, you can see the 17 at the top on that one, follow that ball's progress. Yeah, you can see it's a bit further on the side this time. Now it probably doesn't matter for tour pros because they're getting so many new balls, you've got people changing their golf balls every hole, every two holes, and I do that quite often, but that's not by choice. Um, but, you know, if you are using one of these balls for nine, 18 holes, and you've got the, the weight, you know, you're putting, and you've got the weight on the side, I've stopped using the line of my golf ball, so I'm just putting the ball down, trying not to get too hung up on any markings on it, so I'm not putting the ball down in a consistent place, and so maybe I need to be doing that, to um, make sure that my putt's got the most chance of staying online. Now, you know, does this really matter? Well, maybe, maybe not, but it is interesting and it shows you that there is no such thing as a perfect golf ball. Okay, so what happens if you're out on the golf course and you find you've got more than 14 clubs in your bag? Well, unfortunately, you're in trouble. A very famous incident happened at the 2001 Open in the final round at Royal Lytham with Ian Woosnam. He'd been trying out two drivers on the range the first hole at Lytham is a par three, so he didn't use his driver. Gets to the second tee, he's just made a fantastic birdie. He's in contention for the, to win the Open, to win the Claret Jug, and two shot penalty, absolute disaster. And the difference in prize money in that meant he missed the Ryder Cup as well. So if this happens to you whilst you're out playing, the, the penalty is different if it's stroke play or match play. If it's stroke play, it's a two shot penalty for every hole that you've had more than 14 clubs in your bag, up to a maximum of four penalty shots per round. So if you don't find it till the seventh hole, it's not 14 shots, it's four, but that's bad enough. In match play, it's not a loss of hole penalty, it's a match adjustment. So say you're on the third hole and you realize you've got 15 clubs in your bag, maybe you've got two putters in there like I have now, you've been out on the practice putting green beforehand and you forgot to put it back in the car. Well, in match play, you would finish that hole, the third hole, say you're three up, and for every hole where you've had more than 14 clubs in the bag, the score is adjusted by loss of one hole. So you'd go from three up to one up. So it's slightly different for match play and for stroke play. But the best thing to do is just have a good old count up before you tee off. There is one exception to the rule. If say you're out on the course and somebody's left a wedge by the side of the green, of course you can pick that up and bring it in and hand it in at the pro shop. There's no penalty for that. Obviously tell your playing partners what you're doing. Maybe put the club in upside down or something so you don't use it by accident. But there is no penalty for doing the right thing and picking up another golfer's club when he's left it out on the course. Okay guys, so now it's over to you. This is the subscriber showcase part of the golf show where you get to be the star of the show. If you can send me your golfing videos of maybe hitting a really good shot, a really bad shot, a trick shot, a funny shot, maybe you're playing a famous hole at a famous course, we'll pick the best ones each week and we'll put them out in this section of the show. Today I've got two crackers for you today and it's from a guy called Paul. Now in my experience, you can never have enough Pauls. Paul, you're a really good sport and by the way, it was Luke who sent these in. I want to give you Rory McIlroy's signed night golf shirt and all you've got to do to be with a chance of winning this is to subscribe to the golf show on YouTube. Yes, it's as simple as that. Go on YouTube, search up the golf show and hit that subscribe button. And whilst you're there, Turn on the notifications so you're not going to miss the great content we're putting out there each week. Then, when we get to 1,000 subscribers, I'll pick one at random and I'll ship this beauty anywhere in the world. Best of luck. I hope you enjoyed the episode of The Golf Show. To watch another, click here. To subscribe, click here.